My name is Mike. I'm a one truck owner operator currently leased on to cloud trucks. I've been driving about four years total. Um, I moved across the country and start, changed jobs and that's what brought me to truck driving. Um, I got sick of the company driver life pretty quickly. I did about nine months and got sick of you know short weekends and decided to become an owner operator. Um, signed for my truck in May of 2019. Uh, paid it off November of 2020, and in April of 2021, I came over to Cloud Trucks, and it's been great ever since. So the reason for recording this video is to talk with some of you newer owner operators and discuss some of the challenges that you might face up front uh, and getting started up. Uh, the first challenge you're going to come across, naturally, is getting a truck. Um, depending on the market, there may or may not be a lot available, um, but there's some key features that you definitely want to look for. You want to you know, look for as low mileage as possible. Um, if you can get uh, maintenance records and you know, record of how the truck has been maintained so that you have an idea of how that truck was treated prior, that's great. Um, anything that you can find on the truck that kind of helps save money, such as an APU, is always a plus. Um, but overall, you, know, you want to get the absolute best truck you can for the money, depending on your budget. So depending on the type of trailer you're pulling, that is also a factor that could affect what type of truck you get. For example, I pull flatbeds, so I don't need a full height truck. My truck is a midroof, but if I was pulling a van, that midroof would be very fuel inefficient. So along with uh, just the basics of buying a truck in general, the type of trailer you're pulling is also going to affect what type of truck you should get. Since I drive flatbed, um, my truck already came equipped with a headache rack, a little bit longer wheelbase, um, some of the features like that that make uh, uh, the truck more suited to driving flatbed. Second challenge that you'll face and need to figure out is how to manage your finances and knowing your numbers. Um, you definitely want to make sure to keep track of your gross revenue, your expenses. Um, it will take some time because you will have, you know, uh, variable expenses and fixed expenses. Um, for example, fuel is different every week. You know, maintenance is kind of, you know, preventative maintenance you can plan for, but reactive maintenance you can't really plan for. So it'll take some time for you to get a good baseline of your numbers, uh, but you definitely wanna, as soon as possible, get a good idea of what your cost to operate per mile is, so that when you're booking your loads, you can figure out if the rate is gonna be profitable enough for you and your business. So over time, as you monitor your finances, um, you know, you'll start to find things to look for and watch and certain numbers that uh, you should watch a little closer than others. Um, again, you know, watching your financials as far as your fuel goes is one of the most important because that is your largest expense as an owner operator. So if you can, you know, keep an eye on your fuel and make sure that's better, then you'll do overall better. So depending on how hands-on you want to be with your business, some people like to keep their own books, file their own taxes, but for people that either don't have the ability or just don't want to, you know, you want to make sure to find yourself a good accountant and or CPA so that they can give you a good estimate of what you're going to have to put back for taxes at the end of the year. Um, in a best case scenario, you'll be filing quarterly. That way you don't have to worry about a big surprise tax bill at the end of the year. Um, but whether you do it yourself or hire an outside source to take care of that aspect for you, it is definitely a very important financial uh, part of what you'll be doing. So the third challenge you'll come across is going to be saving money and startup costs. Saving money in this industry is the most important thing you can do. Um, I always tell people it is an absolute feast or famine business. Either you will be doing great and making a lot of money or you will be sitting and losing a lot of money. There is no in between. So, you know, just like your parents told you when you were a kid, save, save, save. You can never save enough. So over time, you'll get a rough idea of what you need to be setting aside for those surprise expenses such as maintenance and whatnot. Um, usually a good baseline to start is somewhere around 15 to 20 cents a mile at a minimum. Um, while I was purchasing my truck, I had a forced uh, maintenance reserve account. They pulled 17 cents a mile for me and it barely kept up. It was to get up to a couple thousand dollars and then something would break and then, you know, so on and so forth. But um, you definitely want to calculate out your costs, you know, over the first couple of weeks to months and set yourself up a planned maintenance savings plan. Personally, um, I don't run as many miles as I used to anymore. So I go with a fixed rate amount. Um, I typically set aside a minimum of $500 a week just for a rainy day. And that 
for the most part covers anything from my maintenance that's actually needing to be done. It also kind of helps me with my downtime. And I am, of course, on my personal side, setting money aside as well, because when the business is on hold due to a breakdown or something, you also need to worry about your home finances because you have no revenue coming in. So, you know, the moral of the story is definitely save, save, save. So the fourth challenge you'll face is maintenance. Trucks or machines, machines break. It's just a fact of life. Um, some things can be prevented and following a good PM schedule is very important for the health of your truck and the livelihood of your business. Um, getting ahead of a problem is always better than reacting to it. So if something's the slightest bit off, don't delay, get it taken care of now because it will always cause bigger problems later when it surprises you. So every manufacturer is different. They have, you know, uh, scheduled maintenance plans for their motors. Um, they give you a rough idea of what to follow. Um, but it's always better to err on the side of, you know, re repairing and replacing things ahead of time. For example, I have a Cummins and they recommend about a 25,000 mile oil change. Personally, I don't like going over 20,000 miles. Um, that way, you know, it, it, an engine has never gotten ruined from changing the oil too soon. So definitely look up for your specific truck and motor and take your manufacturer's suggestions into account and adjust your maintenance schedule from there. It's one of the biggest ways you can save money is to do as much of the work at yourself as you can. Labor on these trucks is very expensive. Most shops are somewhere in the $130 to $150 an hour range. So even if you have to spend a couple hundred dollars on some tools to fix uh, a repair, um, that money saved in labor will more than pay for those tools and then you'll have them for next time. If you're mechanically inclined enough, definitely do as much as you can yourself. It will save you a lot of money in the long run. So for the jobs that you can't handle on your own or don't want to, uh, finding a, the right mechanic is key. You want to make sure they do good quality work and fix it right the first time. There is nothing worse than a shop that fixes something you know, subpar, and then having to go to another shop to have them repair it. And who knows if they repair it subpar as well and so on. So definitely want to find yourself a great mechanic. Unfortunately, the only way to do that is through trial and error and word of mouth. Uh, but definitely find a great mechanic at least as close as possible to home or your operating area and use them, you know, as much as you can. So the fifth challenge you'll come across is staying organized. There is a lot of paperwork, a lot of record keeping, and a lot to keep track of. My suggestion is you get yourself one of those portable hanging file folders or an accordion folder and have a section for everything. You want to keep your, um, your registration, insurance, and whatnot, and everything that you'll get asked for when you're inspected in one place. Keep your fuel receipts all together. Keep your BOLs all together for record, um, but definitely get organized from the get-go because nothing's worse than having a pile of papers that you need to sort through later. I have two ways of keeping track of my paperwork. I have my long-term files and my short-term files. At home, I have a three-drawer filing cabinet with hanging folders for each individual type of paperwork. And then on the truck for while I'm out and about, I have a small portable hanging file folder that way I can keep track and of my paperwork on the road and stay organized while I'm out and about. And then when I get back home, I will take that file folder inside and then file them into a more long-term storage. That way it minimizes the amount of space taken up on the truck. There's lots of things that need to be updated and renewed periodically. Um, my best advice to you is set up some kind of an alert or calendar schedule on your phone. So if you know your insurance needs to reset in February, make sure there's a reminder for February, you know, early February to uh, remind you to renew. So the last challenge you'll face is learning to book the right loads. It can be a little intimidating at first, especially if you've never self-dispatched before. But as you get used to it, it's not so bad. You make a couple phone calls. Once you find a couple loads that you'd like to haul and you call the brokers, you do a little negotiating and you're good to go. It takes a little bit of time to get used to the negotiation process. But my biggest tip for people new to dealing with the broker side is always ask for more money and never settle for a rate that's less than what you want. There will always be another load out there that you can call and book on. Um, there's many tactics as far as negotiating and booking loads goes, but you'll come around on your own.
couple little tips and tricks for booking loads. Um, booking last minute can often get you more money on a load. For example, if the shipper is only open until two o'clock and you book the load at noon, you tell the broker, hey, I'm an hour away, I can be there now, um, but you're gonna have to give me a couple hundred bucks extra on your rate. And nine times out of 10, they'll come up. Um, if not, again, do not be afraid to turn them down because I've had loads where I've turned them down and then they call me back an hour later and accepted the rate that I had asked for. So definitely try to get what you want and don't take no for an answer. So when looking at loads, personally, I like to find as high of a rate per mile as possible while still having a nice balance of overall gross revenue. So I primarily stick to short runs, but that is my strategy and it may not work for you, your operating area or your business and how you run it. Um, but overall, uh, you definitely wanna get your highest rate per mile because your costs are on a per mile base basis. Before I came to Cloud Trucks, I had the advantage of being self-dispatch, but it was off a company load board and it was just their contract freight. It was take it or leave it. So I had the advantage of being able to uh, dispatch myself and kind of, you know, tell my truck where to go. But the calling and negotiating was definitely new territory for me. It took a little bit of time to get comfortable, you know, asking for more money and um, especially if it was a load that I wanted and had to be somewhere. But over time, you get more comfortable and it becomes second nature, just like anything else. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, please add them below.